and thanks for joining me. Today's lesson topic is graphics. Many topics we will discuss in today's lesson build on topics we covered in lessons one and two. So if you're joining us for the first time, make sure to watch my previous FrameMaker videos, lesson one, user interface and workspaces, and lesson two, tables. I bet you're curious what we'll be learning today, so here it is. We'll start off our lesson about graphics by examining a few of the differences between FrameMaker 2017, which we will use today, and FrameMaker 2015, which we used in lessons one and two. Next, we'll set up and save our workspace. Afterwards, we'll import a graphic, which we will then learn how to edit. We'll wrap up with drawing and editing both lines and shapes. Let's jump right in to see what's in store for us today. Let's familiarize ourselves with FrameMaker 2017 and examine some of the differences from FrameMaker 2015. I'd like to begin by focusing on the welcome screen. Notice that you still have the option to open recent items, get additional training and support, and stay updated with the latest Adobe news. However, you now have the additional option to create a new document as an XML file or a FrameMaker file. Today, we'll open the recent file, Lesson3.fm. Now, let's examine some of the changes in the menu bar. First, you will notice that the following menus were added. The Insert menu, the Element menu, and the Structure menu. In addition, the File menu now contains script options, along with the CMS menu options. Finally, Escape keyboard shortcuts were added for many menu options, such as Escape FA for Save As and Escape PH for Publish. The last modification is the addition of the Command Search toolbar, located in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Let's take a look how to set up and save our workspace in preparation for working with graphics. First, you'll want to ensure that the following toolbars and pods are showing. Graphics Toolbar, Quick Access Bar, Object Properties Toolbar, Object Properties Pod, and Anchored Frame Pod. Remember from Lesson 1 that you can show and hide toolbars and pods from the View menu and Window menu. In addition, you'll want to save your workspace for easy access in the future. As we also learned in Lesson 1, you can save your workspace through the Workspace drop-down menu by clicking Save Workspace. Feel free to pause the video for a minute to set up and save your workspace. Now that your workspace is set up and saved, let's import a graphic. From the File menu, choose Import, then click File. Browse to the graphic you wish to import. In this case, we'll import the image smiley.png. Select the image, then click Import. The imported graphic scaling pop-up window appears where you can choose the number of DPI or dots per inch that your computer monitor uses for the graphic resolution. In our lesson today, we'll use 96 DPI. Click Set and the image is inserted into your file. Notice that your image is surrounded by a rectangle. This box is called an anchored frame. You can edit your current anchored frame or insert a new one using the anchored frame pod. Let's look at some of the editing options available in the graphics menu. To align the image within the anchored frame, open the graphics menu. Stand on Arrange and choose Align. The Align pop-up box opens. This option allows you to align your image within the anchored frame. For example, you can align the image, align top. Feel free to experiment with the other options. To flip the object up or down in the graphics menu, choose flip up or flip down. Similarly, 
You can flip the object left and right. To rotate the object, choose Rotate. The Rotate Selected Objects pop-up window appears. Here you can choose the degree and direction to rotate your object. Let's rotate by 90 degrees counterclockwise. To scale an object by a percent, choose Scale. The Scale pop-up window appears. Enter the desired percent in the Factor box. In this case, we'll scale by 50%. Click Scale. Your object is now 50% smaller. To scale an object by centimeters, choose Scale. The Scale pop-up window appears. Enter the desired width and height in centimeters. In this case, we'll scale by 5 centimeters for both height and width. Click Scale. Your object is now 5 centimeters tall and 5 centimeters wide. To view the object properties, open the Object Properties pod. Here you have additional options to edit the size and angle of the object. The final topic we'll cover today is drawing and editing both lines and shapes using the graphics toolbar. First, let's focus on lines. To draw a line, click the Draw Line arrow button and choose Line. Construct the line with your mouse. To change the line width, click the Set Line Width arrow button. Move the scroll bar up and down to adjust the line width. To change the line color, click the Set Color arrow button and choose from the available options, for example, blue. To change the line end style, click the Set Line End Style arrow button. You can choose to add an arrow at the head, an arrow at both ends, an arrow at the tail, or no arrow. To change the line tint, click the Set Tint arrow button and move the scroll bar up and down. Now, let's look at shapes. To draw a rectangle, Click the Draw Rectangle arrow button and choose Rectangle. Construct the rectangle with your mouse. To change the rectangle's fill style, click the Set Fill Pattern arrow button and choose from the available options. To change the rectangle's border style, click the Set Pen Pattern arrow button and choose from the available options. To change the border or fill color, use the Set Color arrow button. That concludes our lesson for today. Let's review what we learned. Today, we started by comparing FrameMaker 2017 with FrameMaker 2015, and then moved on to setting up and saving our workspace. We also learned how to import and edit a graphic in addition to drawing and editing both lines and shapes. I'm open to your questions, comments, and suggestions, so go ahead and add them below. Don't forget to like this video and share the link with others. Most importantly, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure to hit that big red subscribe button. Many thanks to those who already did. See you in our next lesson. Bye.